I'm here to be an all-time great. You're now rocking with the best. Purping yellow, purping yellow, purping yellow, purping yellow. The Lakers repeat back-to-back -back title. Welcome to the Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast. Oh, he's smoking hot. The latest Laker news. Another great Showtime feed. The greatest Laker show. This is going to be legendary for a long time. This is is the Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast. Lakers all day. Go Lakers! Get it. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Big Baby Jonathan here. Welcome to the latest edition of the Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast. On the line right now, I got Gerald Lakers fast break how's it going man hope all is well with you and the family welcome to the show man i'm excited my friend because basketball is here the scrimmages are taking place the lakers are taking place tomorrow as we speak and mm. i'm just so excited because actual nba basketball is right around the corner yes it is right around the corner and speaking of laker basketball they have their first exhibition game tomorrow versus dallas so uh, gerald so tell tell us a little bit about uh the expectations for tomorrow's exhibition game I don't really have much, obviously, for the starters or anybody, the riggers. And they're, they're just there to, just to warm up, just to mm -hmm. get you back into the rhythm, get back into a flow. What I really want to see is how much Frank Vogel is going to test some of the players coming off the bench, the Alex Caruso's, uh, the Dion Waiters, uh, the Quinn Cooks. I want to see, with Rajon Rondo out, and mm -hmm. Avery Bradley not here. I want to see what he's going to do as far as giving them more time and more experience with the ball in mm -hmm. this situation of playing the offense. Obviously, with Quinn Cook and Deion Waiters and Alex Caruso, they've played so many years. It's not about experience as far as playing basketball is concerned, but getting in the flow of the offense because they're now expected to pick up a certain role mm -hmm. that the other players on the Lakers are just going to go ahead and, and have now that you have the situation where Rajon Rondo's out six to eight mm -hmm. weeks. And then, of course, you have Avery Bradley not there. So now there has to be more emphasis on other players picking up the slack as far as playmaking and ball handling. Yeah, most definitely, man. Uh, it's Like you said, just – going to be an exhibition game. I'm excited for it because I haven't watched like your basketball since we lost to Brooklyn. That's the last time we uh, that I watched basketball live on TV. So it's going to be exciting. But today NBA is back. Denver played, Clippers played, and I was actually watching both of those games and the vibe from it, it feels like a European like you, you know when the teams go to Europe and then they play yeah. overseas and they have that just has that vibe to it. You know, just just has the vibe. But also I did see something that the players are not sitting next to each other. They have to sit like two rows down six so, feet apart yeah, six, six feet, feet apart. apart you know so it's crazy i'm excited basketball's back and everything's going well lakers are, lakers are here to stay and i'm just excited really excited so let me ask you this gerald if the lakers do win the championship this year would that be the best championship that they ever won in their history well the best number that you have out there is zero of because of all the people at the orlando bubble yeah Zero out of 346 tested positive. So yep. zero is the best number that you can have in that situation. But for me right now, oh, hey, thank you. Uh, you got got some fans yep. right there. Yep, let's, LJ. LJ. LJ is always a supporter of my channel. Appreciate you. Keep supporting the channel. We got more comments in here. We got Eric. How you doing, Eric? Appreciate you joining live. And uh, Cody. What up, Cody? How's it going? Look, so. you know, you're a popular man. Obviously, you got a great show, and everything's going well for you on there. Yeah, I will tell you right now, when it comes to the Lakers, my expectations are what LeBron's expectations are. Mm -hmm. As he doesn't care who is there, who is not there, but uh, just whoever can be there, he's going to take all the way to a championship. So if he has that expectation, I have that expectation as well. I mean, when you have the one-two punch of him and Anthony Davis. All you need is enough support around them mm -hmm. to go ahead and they will go and just – they'll do it. They'll go ahead and take it all the way because of the fact that they have those two heading up. They have those two players just doing so many great things. AD playing like the defensive player of the year. 
LeBron playing like an MVP, leading the league in assists. I mean, I can throw all the numbers out there, the plus minuses, the mm -hmm. analysis, the analytics and all that. But when it comes right down to it, in a matchup, in the playoffs where matchups are key, mm -hmm. they're, they're really going to be tough to stop. And again, it's just about those supporting characters, the Kyle Kuzmas, the Quinn Cooks, the Danny Greens, mm -hmm. the Alex Caruso's. Do you... Uh, are you going to have enough from them as supporting players to go ahead and get the job done? I think they will, and I think they will get the job done. Yeah, I agree with you, man. We got the supporting cast. We got to do it. LeBron. Every time LeBron is in the playoffs, his team steps up big. The role players step up. So I expect Crusoe to step up. I expect J.R. Smith to step up. And J.R. Smith, when LeBron throws him the ball, shoots 45% from three. And J.R. Smith has lost a lot of weight. He's in shape. So this whole team is motivated to get this done. You know, that's the common goal. Get number 17, man. Number 17 is the key. Because here's the thing. If we don't, let's say we don't win it, it's going to be a complete failure. And a lot of Laker fans will go, oh, we at least made the playoffs. Not for me. Nope. It's going to be a complete failure. You know, as a fan. Because it's for LeBron. If, yeah, it's if it's be, for yeah. LeBron, then it's going to be for the rest of us as well. Because yeah. the expectations when you have 16 world championships already in the bag, mm -hmm. and you've got Boston still right there at number 17 looking yeah. down at you, mm -hmm. that's not cool. I cannot stand that. It burns up. It burns at me every single day that they that they're one ahead of us this is our chance and opportunity because you know what mm -hmm. you never know what's going to happen next year yeah. golden state can get all healthy and they can be play a major major factor something can happen to you know hopefully not but keep your fingers crossed knock on wood something happens to lebron something mm -hmm. happens to ad you know that you never know what's going to happen in the future no matter who you get in the mm -hmm. offseason no matter who you draft or who you trade for Right now, you have a chance as one of the top three teams right now that people are picking for all the way. You need to go ahead and be able to take that opportunity while you have it. Because you never know when you're going to get in again. Yeah, most definitely. And I feel like this is the perfect opportunity. Lakers have a talented team. We got AD LeBron. And I want to see AD dominate because he's, he's the best big man in the league, in my opinion. Best skilled big man. Actually, Absolutely. not a big man. He's a power forward to me. Excuse me. Power forward, man. He's best well, power forward in the game. He, he wants to play power forward. Yeah. Yeah. I but get, his yeah. best position is at the five. Yep. Analytically speaking, you look at the numbers and the 30 to 40% of touches that he gets playing at the number five spot is probably in the best interest of the Lakers. Mm -hmm. But I understand he doesn't like the pounding. He doesn't like the constant banging and, and whatnot it because you as you know he gets all those nicks he gets all those in little injuries here you know week here week there a couple games here a couple games there you know what i understand it breaks him down so obviously frank vogel has to do what he can especially with dwight howard and javel mcgee to try and supplement that as best you can as far as to keep him away from playing five but when it comes right down to it and they're playing the Clippers or mm -hmm. they're playing the Nuggets or they're playing the Rockets or they're playing anybody else in the Western or Eastern Conference for the finals, who are you going to have there in crunch time at, at the five spot? You're going to have mm -hmm. Anthony Davis because you really are, you, you know, you can pick LeBron as you, LeBron is your point guard, AD is your five, and you build any other three around them and you really got the best chance you can for winning a championship. Yeah, most definitely, man. When we you know, AD, if AD plays the five and dominates, let's run it, you know. But AD's mindset, to me, I feel like it needs to be on defensive end because he switches all five. He can switch, you know, length, block shots, run the floor. I'm telling you, this Laker team's hungry. They hear the noise that the media talks about them, you know. And I'm just, I want the Lakers to prove everybody wrong because today the Clippers won their preseason game and get Bayless tweeted that, um, it's over for the Lakers. They have no chance just because of the preseason game. You know, it's like, that's why I can't stand the media sometimes, man. What about you? Do you, well, can you stand the media? It depends on which media. It just, I wouldn't put... I, let's as get me list. Well, yeah, let's not go there. Uh, it depends on which media. As someone who has a journalism degree, I cannot, oh. I, I cannot lump in the entire media as a whole. But there are segments of the sports media Yeah, is just it's hard to take mm. and and the talking heads are paid millions of dollars to be talking heads just that true but there are other good reporters out there who do an honest and solid job of reporting but yes uh, there are certain individuals like the skip baylesses the shannon sharps mm -hmm. the Stephen a smiths the you know the individuals that just love to go ahead and and talk the talk because that's what they're paid to do even if it's the most 
abstract thing that you know is they don't even believe saying it. They just got to say it just because it's opposite and contrarian to what everybody else says. The Clippers have a very good team. But I don't think that, again, in a seven-game series that mm-hmm. they're going to be able to match up with AD and LeBron because I think that is just too much for them. But again, even if the Lakers do or do not win on the 30th, if the Clippers win or do not win on the 30th, I don't think that's really going to be a telling sign for the playoffs. It's what we see in the playoffs going forward is who I think is going to go ahead and, and win because this is probably going to be the biggest challenge for any team ever in the NBA to go ahead and win this championship because it's there's been no other circumstances like this. There's no home team. There's no road team. Mm-hmm. There's no crowd giving you momentum. There's no crowd actually getting you out of a game. It's You're all on your own with you and your teammates. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be something where whoever wins, which is going to be the Lakers, mm-hmm. it's going to be their best ever championship, especially after such – you know, you and you and I spoke. I told yeah. you about that. This year has been so many peaks and valleys, mm-hmm. starting with China and continuing from there. It's been so many – you know, obviously the death of Kobe and, and so many other – highs and lows that they've experienced this has been a season like uh, this has been a season unlike any other and i think the lakers if they win or excuse me when they win uh this will be probably their best championship ever yeah i totally agree with the 100 percent man this will be the best laker championship in history because the whole like you said kobe passing the pandemic and all other stuff around the world and but you no. don't want to take much about it. You don't want to take much, too much into exhibition games. Yeah, yeah. Or or even the eight season regular season games because you, you know how the Clippers they love to go ahead and, and load manage. And mm-hmm. With the Lakers, they've got a five and a half game lead, and it's not like they have to play for the number one spot overall yeah. because there is no road or home team, so it really doesn't matter anymore. So it, all you want to do is stay number one in the West, and they've got such a large lead. I don't see them losing it. Like you're right, man. Those eight regular season games. They're going to somewhat matter, but here's the thing. I remember a couple years ago when LeBron was on Cleveland. To, actually, was yeah, it was Cleveland when Toronto beat Cleveland in the regular season like 3-1, swept them in the playoffs. So regular season doesn't really matter if you get swept. You're just you know? doing working. At this point in time, you're just working on consistency. Yep, consistency. Uh, and also these players coming off the bench, who do you think is going to make a major contribution? And the eight regular season games, I think, will help you decide – if you're Frank Vogel, who is going mm-hmm. to be that contribute? You know those contributors because you're not going to usually when you go into the playoffs, you're only going to have you normally have like a 10, 11 man roster mm-hmm. that's playing regularly. Now you cut that down usually to eight or nine, and who are going to be those eight or nine players that are going to play for you during the course of the playoff game? Give playoff game that you have regularly scheduled. So that's that's what I want to know. That's what I want to see, and that's what we're going to see in those regular season games and also these scrimmages. Who is going to be out coming off the bench? Who are going to be these contributors that are going to earn the minutes? that are going to go ahead and help us win a championship. Yeah, man, 100%. And uh, Frank Vogel was talking about in, during a uh, press conference a couple of days ago that Kuzma is really shining in practice and playing defense and dominating. So hopefully he, that can translate into exhibition in those eight games and the rest of the way. Because if Kuzma is on his game, which I think he can be on his game, but there's times he's in and out. One minute, 18 points, 20 points, next minute, five but if he can, can, has a consistent execution on the offensive end and defense, this Laker team is going to be really hard to beat. With, if Kuzma steps up big time. He needs to step up big time. He does, and he has during this season. I mean, the last two years, as much as we have uh, been in love with Kuzma, yeah. especially that first year where he was doing so awesome, second year was like uh, he was a little bit shot heavy, and his defense has always been atrocious. Mm-hmm. This year, he has just applied himself. The Lakers staff, Frank Vogel, and the entire coaching staff have just given him an ultimatum. You play defense or you don't play. And the way he has really reshaped himself to be, no, he's not going to get on an off defensive team, but to he's competitive on defense and he's actually stopping players and he's challenging them and he's taking up that challenge. I remember earlier this year against Houston, he took up the challenge to go ahead and guard Russell Westbrook and mm. he played very well against him. We are seeing now a Kuzma that is more well-rounded just has to go ahead and be more consistent like he once was in his first year. If he can find that, even for a stretch of 20 games or so, where he can become that third option, my gosh, that makes everything so much easier for the Lakers. Yep, so much easier, man. I'm just excited for what's to come tomorrow. I know, like you said earlier in the show, 
it's exhibition but i just want to see for tomorrow the three things i want to see for tomorrow just get back to like your basketball play defense and i know there's going to be a lot of turnovers and if, and if we struggle and lose i'm not going to trip you know even if we lose oh if we go on three and then go into the eight regular season games and we lose like two in a row three i'm not gonna be worried because it's you gotta get the condition lakers gotta get back in the condition i wish i think they will you know what i mean i don't want to play lebron or ad heavy minutes same so if, if you don't play them heavy minutes there is a good chance that they might not win the game yeah true but it's an exhibition so i feel like frank vogel's gonna only play like lebron and ad probably like 20 minutes you know yeah yeah, I mean, that's what I see as well. Yeah, and then uh, also, too, our rookie from uh, that we picked up in the draft, Horton Tucker, Frank Vogel and the Lakers players are raving about him. You know, he's lost weight, got in shape, got uh, but his ball handling skills up, so he may be a talented point guard that might play for us during this stretch. Well, we'll see. THT has virtually no NBA experience. He's only, got, he's only played in the yeah. G League. Got to find himself. Still got some holes in his game, as far especially around his, where his shooting is. But he does have some talent. Uh, he's very young, mm -hmm. and there is a future there with him. So I'd like to see if he can get some time and play. But also, Dion Waiters, J.R. Smith. You got to see what they can go ahead and do for the Lakers. Markeith Morris, once he gets acclimated, I know he just got down there to Orlando. So it's going to take him some time to go ahead and get acclimated. But he wasn't really into the, what the Lakers were doing. And I'll tell you what, it's just something that I think that people need to go ahead and be patient with. But I think over the course of the eight regular season games, you're going to find a rotation that you, everybody's going to be able to go ahead and appreciate. Yeah, 100%. Morris is going to come back, play that defense, that grit, that grind to shoot that perimeter jumper. And he's going to be a big part of our defense, too. And even like Jarrett Dudley's going to probably get minutes, too. You know, because I remember before the, the Orlando Bubba started, Frank Vogel was talking about they may need everybody to contribute for the championship everybody on the roster so we may see kumpo's brother play we may see quinn cook play a lot more so i'm just excited for the season man like it's been too long it's wait it's been too long i'm excited and i people think i'm crazy for saying this but i'm still angry about losing to brooklyn i know we lost by two points but i'm still angry about it i just want to win that was a, that was very flat the lakers yeah. play very flat obviously coming <laughs> off that high yeah. emotional high of of beating both milwaukee and the clippers back to back and it just, I, when I was watching that game, it was very flat. Uh, and that's something that I think emotionally that they were very let down at. But again, you're playing in a different scenario. You're not playing with a home team, uh, you know, as a home team, you're not playing as a road team, you're not playing in front of a big audience, you're not playing at the Staples Center. You're playing in front of your own play, you know, your teammates. That's all you have there to support you. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be any kind of real ups and downs. Just basically motivate yourself and I see no one better out there to motivate themselves than LeBron James. Yeah, LeBron's a great leader. He's going to motivate them. Anywhere he goes, they win. He's And here's the thing. LeBron's on a mission. He's been in the gym early, leaving late. He's taking everything seriously. He's just staying quiet, being in the gym. And that's the thing I'm talking about, LeBron. Do what Kobe do. Get in the gym every day. Be behind the scenes. I love it, man. LeBron's on the mission. And he hears the noise. He hears it. You know, I know he doesn't like to... Go back at uh, people that criticize him and stuff, but he hears it, he takes it as fuel. Even the team takes it as fuel sometimes. I really feel like when I think, I know a lot of players say they don't watch the Sports Center, ESPN, and NBA TV. They do. They probably use that as motivation. Tell team, hey, NBA TV is saying we're not going to win a championship. They don't think we have enough talent. They probably use it as motivation. So this Laker team is going to be dominant. I'm telling you guys right now, watching me on my live stream, Lakers going to be a team that. People need to watch out for big time, you know. And everybody's talking about, oh, Lakers might not uh, be able to beat Portland because of Rondo. Because Chandler Fry said that, oh, the Portland can beat the Lakers in the seven-game series. And I don't know. We got LeBron, AD. Just because they have Damian Lillard, trap him, make him be a big point guard, you know. So Chandler Fry, come on now, don't disrespect the Lakers like that. Give them, give them respect. Well, if you're basing anything off of Rondo not being in the lineup, you really need to get your head checked because I think you've been missing the past two years. <laughs> Analytically, uh, and I don't mean to, I don't want to yeah. sit here and bash Rondo. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there I was that period yeah. of time earlier this year when he came back from injury and he was shooting above three-pointers uh, three above anybody else in the league. But then that dropped off like a cliff. 
So let's get out of that 15, you know, outside of that 15 game scenario, you have almost two full seasons of him analytically being one of the worst guards in the NBA on both a defensive and offensive end. I mean, he's there because of his reputation on who he was. And he was there based off, you know, he's playing in the lineup with LeBron. He's playing in the lineup and getting minutes because Frank Vogel feels comfortable with him as a ball handler, mm -hmm. as someone who can go ahead and distribute uh, on the offense. But as you and I both see, I mean, there's sometimes when he's ready, to, you know, when the ball goes back to him and the ball comes around back to him, you see him, there's a parking lot full of, you know, just empty space for him to go ahead and shoot because people are just asking, begging him to shoot because they realize he does not have consistent confidence in his three-point game. And he never was able to develop that as well as he should. Then on the defensive side, you just don't see him following the guards. Uh, I, I remember one play in particular earlier this year where he was chasing around some screens and he just stopped because he was too tired to go ahead and, I guess, uh, continue following whoever the man was. So he, he told Kuzma to go after him. Kuzma gave him this look like, really? And the guy <laughs> just... He, yeah, I actually remember that play. Yeah, he's he's... Just not, he's not the Rondo that everybody expects him to be. And I, all I'm hearing now is, my gosh, are we going to be out two weeks of play, playoff Rondo, playoff Rondo? Well, that's the only way I think he's going to be able to go ahead and make a major contribution if playoff Rondo suddenly lives and suddenly comes back to life. I think he will get time once he comes back from injury. I think he will get back into the lineup somewhat, whether or not it's going to be advantageous for the Lakers. We're going to have to wait and see. But analytically, if you're looking at on paper in black and white for the yep. past few years, mm -hmm. he has been one of the worst guards in the NBA. And it speaks for itself. Yeah, I agree 100%. And that's the thing, too. Here's the thing that it's going to be interesting, too. What if Caruso, well, he probably will, get hot, dominating, you know, energetic. And what if Alex Caruso is riding high in the playoffs and the Ronda comes back? Does Frank Vogel say, Caruso, come out? Rondo in like I'm interested to see what's going to happen on that front. You know the rotation when when Rondo comes back. Well, Caruso has been playing at such a great level, mm -hmm. but the only thing that is his detriment right now is his shooting. He the only time he actually found a consistently good shooting from the outside was last year in that 25 game stretch where he, he was trying basically an audition for this year. Mm -hmm. And you know he brings you everything else as far as intangibles. It does mm -hmm. such a great job on the defensive end. It hustles and gets, does everything great. But I don't want to give him too many minutes because too many minutes when you're talking about him at thirty, even you know thirty minutes right there, then you start to see some of his flaws come come about. I love it when he's in there for twenty to twenty five minutes because I really think that's like a, a nice area to go ahead and keep him in that realm. So I think uh, you know I think. That, and like Daniel Artest is saying, he, he is unproven. I think he can go ahead and give you quality mm -hmm. minutes, but just don't give him too much because, again, it gets to a point where some things start to show and some flaws start to show in his game that he needs to develop. But if he can consistently shoot well in the playoffs, mm -hmm. then there's no way you take him out over Rondo. That's yeah. the thing. It, it, it all depends on his shooting. I think mm -hmm. he's going to get. He's going to go as far as the shooting will take him. Yeah, um, Daniel Artes. Uh, yeah, you're right. He's unproven, and he has to prove it in the playoffs. You know, I agree, hundred percent. Until you prove it, he's got. To, he's unproven right now, so we just gotta wait and see there. And uh, let me see here. We got some questions. Not questions. Can we? Yeah, Deion Waiters going to turn up too, man. Deion Waiters, what? and he could play defense, bring up the ball too. He's going to play that physical defense that we need. And you know? he's 28 years old. Yeah, he's not he like J.R. Play. Smith where he hasn't played in two years and he's 34 years old. He is 28 years old. He's in the prime of his – well, should be in the prime of his career. Uh, yeah, he's only played three games this year in the NBA, but he is still very much, like I said, uh, somebody that should be able to go ahead and, and get in shape very quickly and be able to go ahead and perform at a high level. I'm hopeful that he'll be able to integrate himself into the team and system and be a big contributor uh, going forward. Yeah, hundred percent, man. But uh, Gerald, just want to thank you for coming on the Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast. Go ahead and give out your social media, man, so they can follow you on all platforms. I appreciate it. And once again, it's Gerald Glassford for the Lakers Fast Break. If you get a chance, check out our shows. 
at Lakers Fast Break on Twitter, Lakers Fast Break at Yahoo.com, or I'm also part of the Lakerholics.com experience. That's a great place to go for all Lakers fans, is Lakerholics.com. And of course, check out our Lakers Fast Break, like your shows, available everywhere you get your podcasts. Follow me on Twitter, everybody, Big Baby Jonathan. Instagram, Big Baby Jonathan underscore. Subscribe to my channel, Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast. Thank you so much for coming on, man. We'll talk soon, man. Sounds good. Appreciate it. <laughs>